Hey everybody, it's JJ French uh, from Twisted Sister. So this cameo request is really a response to a question. The question is, uh, in the metal community, there's a controversy over how bands of our time, like Kiss, Motley, Crew, and Wasp, are relying on lip sync and backing tracks. What are your thoughts on the use of tracks? Did Twisted ever use them? Uh, thank you, SMF. Well, um, first of all, in terms of backing tracks, I, I think... During the Lovers for Suckers tour, which only was uh, three weeks long, I think, um, because there was so much production on the album, and because AJ left the band prior to the recording, and and his vocals, he sang, you know, upper register or higher octave vocals, um, and he was no longer the drummer. There may have been um, there may have been something because we had a keyboard player at the time. Alan St. John, and he may have had some synth or some vocals somewhere. We didn't lip sync, um, but they may have been some sweetening. Uh, I, I vaguely remember that could have happened. Um, but, you know, the question, the larger question is, you know, uh, in terms of really lip syncing, like where it's obvious, you know, how do I feel? Well, you know, as a manager... This is a more complicated answer. You know, I could say, oh, it sucks. Everyone should just do everything for real. But, you know, there's a lot of money on the table and bands are under a lot of pressure to replicate records. And I guess at the end of the day, the real answer is, do the fans care or not? And if the fans don't care and there's a lot of money on the table and the band has to, the band's under a lot of pressure to replicate um a record then then they get away with it and they do it so it doesn't really matter what I say um, it just is what it is and they do it because they feel the pressure you know very rarely do you have artists who are so honest with themselves and they cannot do what they used to do that they just up and don't do it anymore Robert Plant is one of them he said hey I can't do Zep songs I can't even do it if you lower the key down two steps I can't do it I won't do it um, I'm not going to besmirch the reputation of this band, and uh, I'm not going to do it. So he doesn't do it. And when you see Robert Plant as a solo artist, he'll do some Zep songs in a completely different key, in a, in a vocal range he can actually do it in. You know, this mostly uh, applies to to singers, although with a band like the Rolling Stones, the only one in that band who's actually good these days is Mick Jagger. You know, his vocals actually are as good as ever, if not better. So the rest of the band... I really, you know, need help. I mean, you know, Keith and Woody have arthritis. They can barely play. And I understand that they use guitar players behind the scenes on nights where they really can't play, which may be, you know, the true. But again, the, the point is, you're selling tickets for two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500. What is your responsibility to the fans and do your fans care? Take a band like the Eagles. I don't think the Eagles use backing tracks, but they got 55 guys on stage. So what do you expect of the Eagles? You expect to hear a band that, you know, is probably the most boring live band in the world because it's just like listening to a record, but that's what their fans want. They want to be in a room, breathing the air of these guys, and they play all their greatest hits. But you could, if you had a great stereo, not a, not any different, you know, or get the DVD of, you know, or stream a concert of theirs on a really good surround system, and that's what you get. You get it exactly how they want the record to sound, and that's what they do. So they don't have to have backing tracks because they have so many people on stage. But when you have a band with a classic lineup, people don't want to see it polluted by different people on stage or think that there's people there. So they don't want to know, or maybe they don't care. You know, um, back in the day, like back in the 70s, Farner had a singer behind Lou Graham. Ian Lloyd was his name. And he basically shadowed Lou. And, you know, he sang all the high parts. You didn't see him on stage. He was in the back. And he and he did the vocals. So what's the difference? They didn't have a backing track, but they had a backing singer that you didn't see. Martha Hoople did the same thing. Their tour manager, Stan Tipton, I think his name was, did all the high vocals uh, behind the stage. You know, if you went to a Mott concert and you were lucky to go backstage, you'd see this guy standing 
uh, on a, this guy singing a microphone, you couldn't see him and he's doing it. So again, what's the difference? They couldn't do the vocals the way the vocals should be done. If your expectations are that high, that's what you want to see. So it's very much a matter of what you will tolerate. If these bands believe the fans will tolerate it, then they get away with it and they do it. It's not for me to say whether they should or they shouldn't. You do what you feel you can do and you get away with it if you feel you can get away with it and more power to you. Uh, you know, again, the pressure is on. What do you do when you're charging a lot of money for a ticket and there's expectations, you know, uh, as to the performance? And what do you what are your expectations? Are you willing to forego? You don't care if the singer sings flat or can't sing the key or you know, does it matter to you? Are you going to walk out going it's go? It sucks. Or do you go? Well, they sounded really good. As far as female pop artists are concerned and dance pop artists, they've been lip syncing for years. You can't dance that much and sing. It's almost impossible. You have to sweeten the vocal. So they have a vocal track. They'll sing along with it when they can. And a lot of times they're gasping for air. I took my daughter to see Britney Spears, you know, whatever, 20 years ago. And I, we were sitting like near the front and, you know, she was lip syncing the whole time. So there was no way she was doing acrobatics, floating up on, you know, running around. There was no way she could sing and she didn't and nobody cared. Now, you could say, well, they're eight-year-old girls and they don't care. And okay. And that maybe metal is supposed to be more authentic. That may be the case, you know. But the fans, at the end of the day, they're the ones that will determine whether or not a band um, is allowed to get away with this technique. So it's not, again, whether I like it or don't like it or feel anything is legitimate or not legitimate. We, as a band, Twisted Sister performs live. We've never... In the seven, in the in the uh, twenty years that we came back from two thousand, rather in the uh, in the fifteen performing years from two thousand three to the time we retired, never did. Everything was right out there. All the guitar playing, bass playing, singing, everything was um, was live. We never cut it. But I don't, uh, you know, I just I don't begrudge bands. You know, everyone comes to a certain point in their life. You know, they get to a certain age. We're, we're not twenty years old anymore. You know, most of your heroes are now. 70 or close to 80 and they can't do it so if you're willing to pay and you don't care uh you want to forego a certain amount of um you know of that of that emotion because you want to have it like the record then then they'll do it and you'll pay and that'll be the end of it and so be it i hope that helps you understand my position anyway uh I'll thank you for asking me and um send me another question at any time